Why, hello there, ladies, gentlemen, friends, family, everything in between. My name is Dylan from Alter Universes, and on the left we have Shaka Pinto playing Living End. On the right we have Brady Monroe playing Prison Tron. Brady's on a mold of five, going for that chalice on zero. Shaka immediately shotgunning that force of negation because if you ever played against a Cascade deck, you know one thing. Chalice of the Void is really good on zero against them. Shaka going to cycle Street Razor, going down to 18, going to draw a card. Probably could have done that before the Force of Negation, but it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I'm going to look for a better blue card to exile than Shardless Agent. And Shardless is one of the eight Cascaders in the deck, but really you only need one to resolve, so it doesn't matter too, too, too much. Going to cycle a Striped Riverwinder here. Brady, like I said, it was on a mull to four or five. It was very low. I think it was a mold of four. Uh, Shaka, I believe, kept seven, so <laughs> not a great place for Brady to be in. But if anybody's really going to pilot their way out of this situation, it is Brady. Brady is quite good with Prison Tron. Even winning a SCG 20K last year with it. Was that this year? It might have been this year. Dude, ah, uh, my God. Who knows anymore? Ready to crack the map, find Urza's power plant. Having officially gathered all the pieces to assemble Tron. Shaka, just chilling, vibing. Cycling cards, drawing cards. Eventually he's going to put a bunch of power on the board. Living End seems like such a stress-free deck to play. And you know what? We love that. Plays Ursa Saga, does not play the power plant that we know about. Instead, valuing getting a construct next turn. To produce a blocker or two. Gonna cycle once more, maybe. Looks like we're gonna do that. One more ride on the bicycle. What do we discard in Shaka? Discarding a Curator Mystery is going to draw a card. I apparently remember more of these Cycle Creatures than I thought I would. I had honestly... It's been a while since we've had Living End on camera, and I think I mentioned that a couple weeks ago on while talking on camera. Um, but it's been a while, and uh, <laughs> I thought I'd forget some of these creatures' names by now. I guess I've played against the deck enough. So here's a Shardless Agent going to hit our Cascade Trigger... Going to ex look at... Is it exile cards on top of the deck? How is it actually worded? I think it's just look at cards on top of the deck until you find something that you can cast. And the only thing in the deck that is castable off of a Shardless Agent is Living End. Living End will make both players sacrifice the creatures. Or it'll exile each player's... All the creatures in each player's graveyards. And then makes each player sacrifice all the creatures on their board. And then the exiled creatures come into play. We're going to see two Striped River Winders, a Curator Mysteries, Street Wraith, and then Shardless Agent will resolve. So a crap ton of power. Not exactly lethal yet, especially because Brady will have a blocker for one of the River Winders. But he's not in a position that most people want to be in. I don't want to be in that position. Making a construct. Construct's gonna black the start <laughs> the river winder. Brady just not even getting the token out of the box because this is what's happening. It's gonna die. <laughs> I'm gonna take fourteen points of damage. Brady draws another land for turn. Saga going to crack here. Floating a mana. Most likely going to go get Relic of Progenitus. Yep, goes and grabs Relic. And I assume we're going to be sacking the Relic here to draw a card and try to find Ensnaring Bridge. As I think that's the only way Brady can get out of this situation.
Barring something like an All's Duff that I do not think he plays. Gonna exile both yards. Gonna draw a card here. Oh, Brady patiently waiting for Shaka to exile his graveyard. <laughs> the point in the wait. And does not draw it. So we're gonna scoop it up. Hypercut the game too. Brady on the play. Jumpstone Caverns. Mulligan as well this time. Gonna play a research desk. This card's pretty cool. Shock is gonna read it, and I'm gonna type it into TCG Player, and I'm gonna talk to you about this card. If I don't miss clicking the new tab button 14 times and typing TCG Player into TCG Player. So Mistress Research Dex Desk is a one mana artifact from the Brothers War. Uh, you can pay one mana, tap it, sack it, uh, exile the top two cards of your library, choose one of them until the end of your next turn. You may play that card, and you can unearth it for one and a red. That part's a little less relevant. I don't think uh, Prison Tron is paying one red mana to do that. The only thing that might not actually be Research Desk. That might be Tablet. I'm pretty sure there's a tablet that likes specific inscribed tablet. Yep, Dominar United. I lied to you folks. Dominar United is uh that is inscribed tablet from Dominar United. One mana, tap it, sack it, reveal the top five cards of your library, put a land from among them into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. If you didn't put a card into your hand this way, draw a card. So it always replaces itself. I get the name of that one and Mishra's research desk confused all the time. But while reading the effect of, <laughs> of the research desk, I was like, this isn't the card that I want. I want <laughs> that that is. This is definitely the wrong card. There's a spell skite there. Spell skite will redirect something. If it's on the board, it'll redirect the Brazen Barrow. If Shaka plays Brazen Barrow. Does Living In play Brazen Barrow? Rhinos definitely do. Rhinos love that card. I'm gonna dig for a land here. Top five. We see an Urza Saga and a Urza Tower. Shuffle them to the bottom of the deck. Plays a Stone Brain. This card, super cool. Uh, very good in this deck. So Stone Brain from the Brothers War. This one is actually from Brothers War. It's a two CMC artifact, uh, legendary artifact. For two mana, you can tap it, exile the Stone Brain, choose a card name. Third target opponent's graveyard hand and library for up to four cards with that name and exile them. The player shuffles, then draws a card for each card exiled from their hand this way, and you can activate it only as a sorcery. So, very cool card. Uh, Brady will most likely use it here as a way to uh, get rid of things that can remove his ensnaring bridge. So, he might activate it once, or the first time activate it for Brazen Borrower, and then uh, can do it on Buseju, Odawara, any of the things that could commonly remove an artifact. Alright. Violent Outburst into a Living End. The top card, too, which you don't see very often. It's kind of funny. That Chalice had gotten Force Negationed. Uh, then we're going to get a Architects of Will trigger? It's Architect something. I don't know if it's Will. It's a Demir creature. There's a card called Architect. Ooh, bam. Look at me go. This is going to be the highlight of my freaking week. <laughs> when an Architects of the Will enters the battlefield, look at the top three cards of the target player's library, then put them back in any order, and then you can cycle it. Draw a card. Pretty cool card. It's from Arch Enemy. I don't know if I can name a single other card from Arch Revenant. Oh, yes, I can. Wow, there's a lot of cards in this set that I know of. Memnark, Reanimate, Kamal. I only know Kamal because working at a card store and buying cards from people. 
Brand Dynamo. <laughs> Folks, I would like to make a call for anybody watching this. If you have Nissa Resurgent Animist, or whatever the new Nissa is called, and you feel like playing the four color deck on camera, let me know next time you're in the store on a Monday. I would love to put that deck on camera. I think the deck is super sweet in general, but with the addition of Nissa, I really want to see it in action. Uh, and I do not own any copies of that card. So, yeah. Because Aftermath was a product, is a product that exists. It's one of the products of all time. There's an ensnaring bridge on Brady's board. Shaka, going to have to try and find a way to get rid of said bridge. Yeah, that was like the best turn for Brady to, to draw it too. It's the saga popped. So he doesn't have a third land. <laughs> Tap breeding pool. Stone brain. Targeting Shaka. Um, this is the first activation of Stone Brain. So this probably named Brazen Borrower. As Brazen Borrower does get around uh, the welding jar on his board. Cards like Foundation Breaker do not. Well, you could, I guess, double Foundation Breaker, but. There's no way to flicker it, to my knowledge. Unless Living started playing some cool and interesting things, they can't play Ephemerate. <laughs> or they could, but I wouldn't recommend it. Um, there is. What is a card that uh, Initiative played in Legacy? You chant if you channel it, it flickers something. Touch the Spirit Realm. That's a three CMC card. I think you could play that. I don't. I don't know what you're in. What like what else? What other reason you're in white for? You could play the four color version, five color version of the deck that plays. Uh, there's a blue white Cascade card. Ardent Plea. Ardent Plea. I know the names of so many more Cascade deck cards than I thought I would, considering I haven't played Rhinos in like two years now. I mean, I don't think I've ever actually owned Living End. I've played the deck. I don't think I've ever owned it. Skate off the top of the deck. Yes. Very much enjoy when cards just don't touch Brady's hand. He just like picks the card up and goes, Yeah, I'll play it, whatever. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to. 
One of the other co- ooh, force negation. Getting, not letting that torpor orb resolve. One of the cool things about uh, Stone Brain specifically in this deck is Karn the Great Creator can buy it back uh, after it's been activated because it's an exile. And really cool. It's an interaction that I feel like has become more common, right? Like the whole Karn grabbing things from exile. But I know for a while uh, I had to answer a lot of judge questions in relation to Karn's ability to, you know, take an artifact card you own from outside the game or in exile. Like, most people just assume it's they can only do the sideboard, even though on the card it literally says in exile. But, I mean, hey, card game players, when have we ever actually read our cards? Five mana. Maybe we're just hard casting Overwinder. Or is it the Foundation Breaker? It looks slightly green, and that looks like it's actually only four mana. So I'm assuming it's Foundation Breaker. Yep, gonna redirect it to the Spell Sky. Definitely Foundation Breaker. Radial good at 18 here. What a fantastic draw. Found, finds mine off the top of the deck. Or, yeah. Then plays Karn the Great Creator. Karn will down tick. Picking up Stone Brain. Playing Stone Brain. And activating it all in one go. I think at this point, if Brady can manage... Yeah. Shock is just going to scoop it up. I was like, Brady sniping one of the other pieces that Shock can use to remove the, uh, the bridge. Brady will eventually just be able to combo kill through Malarkey. Botanical Sanctum. Cycling Architect's Will. Trot card. Game three. Shock on the play. I don't think Brady uh, <laughs> mulligan this game, which is nice. Leads on an immediate Relic Regenitus. Exiling a card from Shaka. Island as land for turn. Evokes a foundation breaker. Pops the uh, relic. Honestly, pretty pretty good line. I guess the only fear is like if Brady has ensnaring bridge and you don't have a way to prevent it from coming down now that you just used one of your answers. Well, if you living into back, right? There's a spell sky. So Foundation Breaker wouldn't be an answer anyways. Except I'm casually forgetting that Living End sacrifices the board. Missy land return. Going to evoke a grief. Pitching another architect. Going to show Shaka his options here. Spell Skite, uh, the tablet, two stone brain, one stone brain. It's a legendary frame underneath of that card. I'd be very surprised if Brady has mismatched versions as he plays this deck all the time. Now, it could be intentional. Brady is a menace. <laughs> I've known Brady for like seven or eight years now, something like that. He's a menace. I'll take the stone brain. Fetching with Misty here. Gets a steam vents. Shardless Agent. Gonna get a Cascade Trigger. See Force of Vigor. Some cards. Grief. Force of Negation. Agent. More lands. We are going. Colossal Sky Turtle. Big fan of that card. Mostly because it's a giant turtle in the sky. 
Living End. Cool. Living End will resolve. Shaka will get a Foundation Breaker and a Grief. We'll be able to rip a card here from Brady. Breaker there, and I'll take the other. Foundation Breaker then breaks the Urza Saga. Stone Brain gets discarded. Oh, there's another copy of Stone Brain. Brady got mismatch of stones. Okay, land for turn. Play Spell Skite, pass back. Shaka has a current, currently has a five turn clock. This guy is an 04. So, we'll be able to block the agent slash foundation breaker. But one of the two two plus the grief is gonna get in every time. Grief having menace. So good. I think I'm gonna respond to you. Sorry, you kinda do that really fast. Will Mystical Dispute the Spell Skite that's getting cast. Passes back, Shaka fetches. Tap the Breeding Pool. I wonder if the deck plays the Stomping Grounds. I feel like it should, right? Or do you just have every land in your deck make blue? in. Five more damage getting through. Ready to go ten. We'll pass back. Once again, five more. Pretty not dead next turn. We'll be able to make a construct. Yes, I do. Oh yeah. Okay. Ah, uh, the card game finger player tab. Trying to figure out what we're doing. Right. Swings in once again. Gonna make a construct. Construct is a 2-2. Two -two. See the construct jump in front of Charlotte's agent. They will trade. Sorry, it's a 3 3. Spell Skite's an artifact. Duh. We'll evoke a grief pitching with the end. That grief will die. We're gonna play Curator Mysteries. That grief will eventually end up in the graveyard. Boom, there you go. I think in a similar position to where he was game one, where he needs to find Ensnaring Bridge. The options are Saga make a construct, but that doesn't block the Curator. I don't think anything in his deck blocks the Curator, so you have to go get Relic, pop Relic, hope the draw bridge. Which is not the best place to be. Card and that one card is insane. That might be the only line I have, though. Kind of 
been going that way a little bit. <laughs> so. It's like a pot's foot, Samantha. Grabs the relic. Brady taking all of his options into account here. See the relic popped. Of course, it's right there. You just, you just know it. Uh, brown, so that is the card. Two games. Two games. Whew. And that will be game three going to Shaka. 2-1 with Living End over Brady Monroe's Prison Tron. Thank you for watching, folks, and have a great rest of your day. Oh, my God.